but we did the the newest raid. Uh, I gotta say, I thought it was pretty fun. It wasn't the longest raid. What what'd you guys think about that? Is they they made uh they went out of their way to say this isn't a raid lair. What'd you guys think of that? Because to, to me, it felt about the length of a raid lair. I think they don't want to classify it as a raid lair because it's a new location, right? So that they can't really call it a raid lair. Um, okay, interesting. But yeah, I think since they were so upfront of like, hey, don't expect like the longest raid, which was nice because you kind of just jumping in, you're like, okay, this isn't going to be as long as the last wish, which was nice. But I kind of like the length of it because I think it's a quick like six man activity that you can jump in, depending on obviously how high you are in light and kind of like get through it kind of fast, just like a really fast, fun activity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not like last wish where you really got to commit an hour exactly. or more, depending on the raid. Can you team. guys set the picture for maybe someone like myself who hasn't had a chance to play it right well why don't we talk um, about the encounters a little bit we'll yeah, go... yeah we can go through the rain and we'll yeah please talk do. about yeah. each section yeah. of it explain please. it to me and p- paint me a picture so you land you land in the raid for the first time and you're in the city you're in the last city you're kind of like oh cool you've got the streets of the city that you can ride your sparrow around you've also got the rooftops of the city where you can jump around and there is a map that you can unlock by killing a certain guy and dunking a ball uh, kind of toward the middle of the more map. Balls. More balls. More balls. It is the season of balls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> more the decade, <laughs> and, uh, really. The decade of balls. Yeah. Comes the to decade of balls. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, from there, uh, you basically are presented with a map that tells you kind of where to kill enemies and where to deposit their balls. Mm-hmm. In the city, yep. giant city. In the city. So, <laughs> is this is this like a city, a cityscape similar to like the episodes we've played a couple missions in the last city, right? Yeah. At the beginning of Destiny Two, yeah. and Similar feel. Similar scope. It doesn't. It doesn't have like kind of the bombed out look of some of the the areas that we yeah, saw. Yeah, it's like a city. Yeah, okay. it's, it's it feels like this, if you don't know it feels fairly going. clean mm-hmm. and the streets are well defined and the it like feels like a like a few city blocks. Yeah. So it, I'm sure you guys it, were it feels you guys kinda, were doing the it feels kind of cyberpunk in a way like dystopian oh, cyberpunk. A little bit. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Lots of neon signs everywhere. So you guys were going for ways. You guys were going Chanel, for worlds yeah. first. So I'm sure you figured it out. You know, you were the first to figure out the puzzle and get through to the next. Oh, I'm segment. sure we were. I'm sure we were. Absolutely. I'm sure we were. Um, <laughs> <laughs> was it difficult to figure out on your first run? I don't feel like that one was very difficult to figure uh, out. I don't think many I don't think many parts of the raid were necessarily difficult to figure out. I think what was really interesting about the first part is like, well, <laughs> where there's just a big city and you kind of don't know where to go and it's very yeah. easy to get lost. There's, so yeah, there's that was the biggest of, thing when you first There's a lot of in. like just scale to it. You yeah. yeah, I think this is one of the first encounters. Like actually a lot of areas of this raid are some of the first areas where we've ever had a ton of 3D space to play with. A lot of mm. things, you yeah. know, you have like one or two levels. This, like, you have to jump up on top of skyscrapers. You go down into low sewer drainage, mm-hmm. you know, areas. There's, okay. there's sparrows a, are a viable option yeah. for getting around. There's yeah. a there's a ton of there's a, just a ton of movement in this raid, uh, which just I just the think, fact that sparrows yeah. were so prominently featured throughout mm-hmm. the raid i thought was really refreshing mm-hmm. like, like every part. so you can always yeah, load up part. your sparrow yeah yep. mm-hmm. yep. i'm sorry uh, yeah mm-hmm. what was that sorry uh, i just said like every part you basically are using your sparrow like yeah, yeah. Aside, aside from like Ooh. one or two traversal areas yeah. uh like yeah. yeah you're basically every encounter you can use your sparrow yep. and yeah. was there one like they they tweeted out that um you're gonna want to bungie tweeted out <laughs> that you're gonna somebody at bungie that you're gonna want a specific you know, you're going to want a sparrow with certain characteristics. Did you like guys find sparrow? that you. Like a sparrow you, from this raid? When you get shot? Or like instant spawn sparrows are definitely important. Like a sparrow. So, what kind of sparrows should I get, should I look for to get ready? Instant spawn. Instant spawn. So, but I think, I think the big play here is getting a sparrow yeah. with the fast summon mm-hmm. and then have a ghost with instant spawn. Exactly. So, that way, if yeah. your sparrow does get killed, you can spawn it straight away and you can get on it right yeah. away. Yeah. Double Normally, dip. though, if your sparrow yeah. gets killed, you're on it. <laughs> no, you got to jump off in time, Briar. You got to jump off over don't some of the chasms. What well, you could yeah, also do you <laughs> is just pull the raid exotic sparrow out of the chest the second time, and then you're good mm-hmm. to go. All right. So if you get that, it just follow. Okay. Do what I do. Okay. Just get just get the drop. Okay. All right. Just, just get, get the drop. You get just it. Get the exotic sparrow. Get the exotic sparrow, it. and then and then you're good. You, you just got like it. that. Yeah. 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 
Nice. And what does the exotic sparrow give to you? What does it look like? Describe it for me. It looks cool, for one. Uh, and it okay. gives the ability, it says it's got more durability, but like specifically it says that enemies are more likely to avoid shooting you when you're on that sparrow. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which can definitely help. That's with a this. nice perk. It is a nice perk. That is a nice perk. You still what get, the lore you still get blown that? up. I mean, how is that possible? <laughs> like, where, where, explain that perk for me. Okay. I got you. <laughs> so there's work? a frequency inside the engine that uh, the enemies okay. just don't like. So when you're humming the oh, engine, they get all discombobulated. yeah, it's a type of thing, you know. So like when you're <laughs> when you're when you're on the sparrow making that noise, they just naturally say, "Don't shoot that one" because it's making that frequency. So God. there you go. This is Tefty's lore minute. Uh, subscribe to me on uh, YouTube <laughs> for more lore facts. I got them all. Uh, so, so once you, you do that, it, you open up the map. Yeah. Yeah, okay. once you do that, you op- you open basically like uh, mm-hmm. the underground. So where the the fallen have been tunneling under the city to get into the black armory, and you start following their tunnels, <laughs> and you very quickly kind of run into a situation where you're being chased on your sparrow by this gigantic servitor that is also on fire. Like so tell, me it's a ball. Ball. tell me, it's a ball. It's, it's a ball. It's a ball. It's a flaming ball. Yes. Ball. yes. Indiana and, Jones. Your it's entire fire team, team. Yeah. your entire fire team is now racing down this corridor that, of course, has all sorts of obstacles in it, sure. uh, and being chased, and it, it's really an exhilarating moment. Like it's a ton of fun yeah. and frustrating like if you suck at Sparrow. SRL. Tribute. Yes. <laughs> Very frustrating. Um, I'm the worst. <laughs> uh, pro tip: plug in a controller if you're on PC because sparrows perform way better with a controller than they do with mouse and keyboard. Or get good with mouse and keyboard, <laughs> like I did. Yeah. Now I can get past that. Idea sounds a lot easier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have an unpopular opinion. And although I play Destiny 2 on mouse and keyboard and I play Fortnite every other game, mouse and keyboard, I play Destiny 2 with the controller all the time. Because Same. I feel like Destiny just plays really good on the controller. I will say, like, if you're mainly playing PvP, I would say go mouse and keyboard, but there's something about the controller that just feels good with Destiny. Feels nice. Destiny does feel really good with the controller, just straight up. It was created for a controller, mm-hmm. right? So now I definitely feel really like plugging good. plugging my scuff controller in, use code DCP, to <laughs> play Destiny really heightens that level for me. The, you know, the mappable buttons and just brings your level yeah. to a whole nother. Hashtag mm-hmm. ad. Yeah, really, 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 really helps bring your uh, Sparrow gameplay to another <laughs> level. Yeah. Where you, you know. You'd be, so I feel like when I put the ball. long sticks on it, it oh. helps it bounce off of the wall after I toss it there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it helps protect the plastic. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, exactly. And those paddles really help it fly across the room. Yeah. The controller or this? Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so after you escape the servitor, From the, you have to do... The, I think the community well, also has named it something. Have you guys heard this? I have No. You? What is it called? Okay. Every raid team has got to have its own name. <laughs> the hemorrhoid. <laughs> the hemorrhoids chasing. And so I've heard there's been in chat. There's a lot of a lot of people have been talking about that. I feel like that's you, Tiffy. That's your chat. No. I mean, my raid team <laughs> called it like uh, the night after Taco Bell or something like that. Yes. So oh no. It, yes. It, it makes it. I can see where that comes from. Names. Running for yeah. the border right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is gonna be a lot of imagery happening right now for me. Yeah, Thank you. I don't know. I like the name Barney. So burning ball Barney. coming out of shoot. Barney. Barney the burning ball. Mm. Barney the burning ball. The alliteration. That's got a ring to it. I like it. Yeah. Like the wholesomeness <laughs> from Watts's suggestion. Barney. Barney the burning ball. <laughs> okay. So you make it to the other side. Mm-hmm. From Harold right. the hemorrhoid. Harold, <laughs> so that, Harold the hemorrhoid. <laughs> then there's a little bit of kind of jumping around trying to get to the next encounter, and you are presented with a huge arena with several tall buildings, like three or four story buildings, in kind of uh, like a sandy lot, like a uh, really big arena though, uh, which is very sparable. Again, you're, you've got sparrows, and you've got the last two encounters of the raid in that big arena. The first one is trying to activate. Uh, this kind of tank in the middle or to destroy the the guard around it, uh, in which case you send people up downstairs to collect two matching balls. Um, more balls? Yeah, more balls. It is a season of the balls. Or, it's or triangles of balls. or squares. Yep. Uh, and they are, they are locked down there by these like electrical doors that are controlled by a servitor spawn. So the people upstairs 
can turn that door on and off by killing the servitor that spawns upstairs. The people downstairs are grabbing those balls and using them. Once they get two or two matching items, they can bring them back upstairs and spawn in tanks to damage the kind of center area boss. Yep. Is the center area okay? boss? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I get it. A, a little I'm, different. I'm you don't actually get a ball in this one. In this particular case, you get no. a buff. And so when you, you, you actually melee the panels, it'll show a circle pyramid or a box. And then you may you have to melee the two things twice, corresponding to go upstairs and spawn yeah. a tank. Does it matter which um, shape it's there? Only the f- you got to get two of the same shape. Yeah, only the second time. Or first time you can just or melee. You, or you can just get one. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. You could get one. Does it not matter? To spawn you a can't tank? spawn a tank with one. No, you can't. But if you go back again, you can get another. Okay. So, Wait, what? That was unhelpful. So you leave, <laughs> guys, just I'm taking a break. <laughs> and you go back in and get a second one to get a tank. I'm confused. Yeah, what? Yeah, that's what we did. That's what we did first time through. Um, <laughs> so not only do you have sparrows in this raid, but you've got tanks. And I, there is actually a spawn. A, you could spawn a tank in the first part of the raid as well. Um, oh, right. But, I mean, it's the first time we've really had vehicles in a raid. And it really freshens up the whole experience. Like having these huge like cityscape areas to fight in and to to sparrow around in a raid really changes the feel of the raid, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of having these like real tight corridors, almost Halo style, where it feels like you're just going from one encounter to another. Like you've got these like broad, huge areas, and it, it really changes things, the feel of it up a lot. Yeah. How'd you guys feel with your light level at that point? <laughs> Let me tell you, those vandals. To hurt real yeah. bad. What was your? Snipers I was soft. <laughs> what was everybody's light level going in? I was six twenty four when I went in. I was six nineteen when I went in. <laughs> so I didn't go for worlds first. Um, that's like a common thing with me is that I never ever go for worlds first, just because I don't like the pressure. I don't like the competition. Like I just like sitting back like later that night and be like, listen, if we mess up, if we don't get it, like I I need no pressure. I like no pressure situation. Plus, so. it's super early, right? Yeah, that's yeah. Like. yeah. <laughs> Nine a.m. is rough. So, what was your light level, Lauren? So I think mine when I first went in was six twenty eight. I want to say. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Pretty good. 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 Um, I ended up being Holt. about six thirty two or so for me. Six thirty two. Somewhere around yeah, there. Because you. I was grinding. Yeah. You're efficient. You're efficient at grinding. Somewhat. Yeah. I have. I, I was pretty I, efficient. I just started really low. <laughs> so I could have made other characters and grinded them out because I only have a hunter on PC. But instead, I just relied on my RNG. And luckily, and it was next to me. God tier RNG. <laughs> it's a really good for one character. I, yeah. yeah, it was really good. My my first character ended at like six thirteen. My second was at six eighteen. So I got like plus five after all yeah, everything. I was like, oh no, this is gonna be bad. And then <laughs> fortunately, my third character had okay ish RNG, and I ended at six, like six twenty nine. I think my warlock. I felt like I got hooked up on my warlock which is the third character i grinded but he literally went 60 levels <laughs> in the That's period crazy. of like 48 hours <laughs> well i was gonna enter into the raid but i was 608 so i figured it would best be wait till later <laughs> there, although there's no minimum light level so you could have you could get carried really really bad yeah <laughs> but, so we gotta talk so about the final encounter because of... it's amazing right it's okay, the final okay, encounter okay. you break this kind of barrier around this kind of like thing in the middle and it is revealed that it is this huge mech the thing's got to be what's that titanfall titanfall it looks like a titanfall mech right it looks like one of the atlas mechs it's huge and it you proceed with this boss fight that is uh it's kind of crazy because you've got people zipping around who've got to again um get tanks and you've also got a map telling the people where to go to get the uh, balls to deposit into the tank m- vendor machine. The more balls, <laughs> vending machine. Vending yeah, machine no, for these the are tank. these are balls. Yeah, these right? are you are picking up balls from the very annoying fallen dude. Yeah, and taking it to a tank spot. You've got snipers everywhere, and you got this huge <laughs> mech just kind of lurching around and shooting all sorts of cool stuff at you, and. Uh, you know, there's a damage phase, and the damage phase is some interesting stuff to it where you got to stand kind of next to somebody who's got the, a similar 
buff as you've got. Otherwise, you could actually hurt each other. It, it's a really interesting fight. Yeah. Wow. So it feels like they really are putting a twist on a lot of Destiny cooperative supers, like mm -hmm. the Warlocks, the Warlock uh, uh, Solar and the Titan. They're, 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 they're designed to work in combination with each other in proximity. So does that mean that you had to separate? Yes. No, the, this... Yeah. Like I don't I don't know what went into like designing this fight, but this from like the playing side, it's like oh, w normally we want to get together, we want to group up, we want to you know shoot stuff, and then now right. it's like you were gonna die if we do that. <laughs> okay, so we gotta yeah. we gotta spread out a little bit. Like you can still use that stuff to to buff you and to mm -hmm. to help you out, but it's gonna have less dramatic effect because it's not the six of you just standing in one spot shooting one enemy. It's like you do a damage phase and you kind of have th three groups of two, but halfway through the damage phase, you have to like kind of swap who your partner is. So like go to it because you do more damage if you're with your buddy who has the same buff as you do. Yeah. So, but you, you actually take damage if you're by somebody who's got like a different buff than you do. So it really oh, means crazy. that you got to kind of play like almost like a musical chairs during the, the damage phase. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, like I've heard different things feelings on this yeah. i thought it was a really fun mechanic because it kept you on your toes some people really don't like it some people you know just want to just i feel like light level being low light level that was a major pain in the ass because you get like hit by a sniper mm -hmm. you're almost dead already and then you take like one yeah. or two ticks of the the debuff from the um the the wrong polarizations and then you're dead so that yeah. was super frustrating now that i'm light level with it it's like it's actually a fun mechanic to play musical polarity with each other yeah. It's a yeah. nice way to buff your damage, right? Because if you say if you have no warlocks, you don't have a well, and you don't, or you're not using melting point and all that stuff, you have a way to buff your damage, and it actually it adds a significant amount Huge. of damage to yeah. what you're doing. Yep. It's, wait, wait. So, so the size of this boss, I'm I'm picturing like mech warrior, you know. Oh, it's huge. huge. It's yeah. huge. Right? It's, it's, so can yeah. you can you like knee him with a? Can you the knee? A, the knee is all powerful. <laughs> is it so you can still put him on can you melt a point him still i'm pretty sure yeah well you just said it like you knew like like look, it was stop. Fact. like he's he did very, it very angry when he, <laughs> like he had done angry. it yeah do please show me an enemy that has that you can't knee i don't have actually you, hold is it honestly you probably can but you might die and you're gonna take a long time to go do damage. he does have a pretty nasty area of effect if you get he close to him does. right but when you're doing <laughs> yeah. damage he's got his ball hanging out of his stomach just like <laughs> you know so this he's really, another ball really yeah. yeah. expose the stomach. ball shoot the ball chuck the balls uh i i don't know i think it, it the raid to me felt so different than any other raid that we've done that it, it made it feel fresh in like some significant ways. Yeah. Um, I've always wanted like a chase scene in a raid and I thought we got it here and it, it felt really fun to me. Uh, I thought that the cityscape both at the beginning and the end just created an arena that we've never fought in before. It, it, it's almost like doing a raid in a patrol, you know, like it was, it felt that big at times. It was fun. Yeah. I, uh... I think my favorite thing about it, I mean, it's cool that it was in the city. It's cool that you get on sparrows. It's cool that the, the pacing is very different from um, the other raids in Destiny 2. The, the, but my favorite thing for sure is that mech. And for the first couple hours, I was like, this is amazing. And then the light level frustrations were kicking in. And I was getting annoyed at it. And I was like, this has only happened day one, getting super annoyed at the boss. Um, and now that we've done it a few times and smoked through it, it's like, it's a really cool raid encounter. It's easily one of my favorites. I'm most happy when there's no jumping puzzles. I suck at jumping, so the fact that there was no jumping puzzles, I was like, thank you. Finally a break from jumping puzzles. <laughs> a As a day one warlock, I strongly agree. 